This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Domain.com. Today we're going to NAB. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques. One of some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And as many of you already know, we moved to a new location in Texas. And a lot of you are now like, why? Didn't you just move? Yes, we did. And then we did it again. We're actually going to be jumping around a bit until we find where we want to permanently just stay. Then hopefully we're going to be building our studio in that area. But the best, the biggest upside is our internet upgrade. Man, the last house was just a technology suck. It blew. Terrible. It made running an internet-based company very, very difficult. But now we have screaming faster internet, which makes me feel like this. It was crazy though. The day after we finished moving, I had to finish up the latest Pimpin Productions episode and then fly to NAB. Which, actually, if you haven't seen the episode of Pimpin Productions that we just put up, you must. It is definitely the most fun I've ever had shooting something by far. I mean, we also probably did the most difficult VFX shot that I've ever worked on, which is at the end of the episode. So a lot of you have been asking how we did that shot, and I definitely plan on showing it, but I want to give everyone who hasn't seen it another week to cram it into their image receivers before I go spoiling it, all the goodness. So go. Go now. It's got jets, clowns, VFX, a llama, me and pain. I mean, what what more can you want? The you and pain part's perfect. I know, right? So enough about that. Today we're talking about NAB. Shaka boom. Is that directed at me? Yes. Does that mean cut to the bumper? Yes. Oh, sorry. Want to try that again? No. Oh, fine. Shaka boom. Oops. You are such a mother. So NAB is massive, just freaking massive. It's pretty impossible to see everything. So I'm just giving you the things that really interested me or I know you guys are very interested in, starting with Adobe's booth. They had talks from Andrew Kramer, Al Mooney, and a ton of other awesome people. But what I'm really excited about is just the continuing awesomeness that is Adobe. With this next version, they're showing once again that they really do have their ear to what people like us want. Like the streamlined workflows that they're creating within Premiere, adding stuff like better audio effects that you usually would find in Audition. This is huge for me. Most of the time, I don't want to have to jump out of Premiere and into Audition for just one small little audio tweak. So this will help tremendously. And small, simple things like combining a through edit back together. There are so many small advances that are really huge to your daily editing life. Of course, you all know about the After Effects thing with the crazy, awesome, dynamic linking to Cinema 4D, which is just freaking crazy. Just watching true integration happen between 3D software and After Effects. Mm. And then there is the new roto brushing goodness. I love roto brush, but with certain bits of small detail, it just doesn't really fully work out. But now there is the refine edge tool. This thing looks nuts. Bringing back fine details and hair, it's just, just crazy. And great advancements like this are happening across their entire suite. But then I moved on. I went to Red Giant's event to see Seth Worley's new film and the new software that they made the film for, Bulletproof. This is an ingest and organizational tool for your footage. It's limited in the formats that it can handle right now, but they're gonna be expanding that. And I definitely think this is gonna become a very heavy part of my workflow. And Seth Worley's new film is, I'm gonna say it's his best yet. It's not online yet, but when it is, I'm definitely gonna be making it the short film suggestion of the week for Monday's episode. Moving on again, after the software loving, I went over to the Central Hall, drooled over some great cinema lights, Canon's setup was quite delicious and saw some unique stabilization units, including the Movi, which I'm sure you all already know about, but if you have not heard, maybe you live under a rock or in a cave or something, it's this, a new stabilization system that is just out of control, amazing. I want it, I want it in my life, but for more info and great explanations on what it is, go here. This is the place to go here because you want to see examples of what it does and Go there. Then I head over to Kessie Baby's booth. Kessler is doing some awesome stuff as usual, but the two things that I'm most excited about is the Pocket Jib Traveler, which is a five pound jib that collapses small enough to toss into a backpack, but extends to be six and a half feet long. Six and a half foot jib capable of holding 10 pounds 
it fits in your freaking backpack. That's a gorilla filmmaker's dream, especially if you're the one man army type guy like me. I'm on shoots like that all the time. The second thing, of course, is the CineDrive, which is what we used for the big VFX shot at the end of Pimp Your Productions. It's a full on motion control rig for under $10,000, which is incredible. And I know you guys are like, what, $10,000? But you'll also be able to rent this thing for much cheaper than, well, much cheaper is an understatement than any other motion control rig. It is just insane. And now they have a jib arm that you can throw on. That's just sexy. If you want more on the Cinder Drive, check out the case study I did for Kessler right here about the VFX shot, actually, that we did, which also gives a quick breakdown of how we did that shot. So that was the first half of the goodness. Now, a quick break, and then we'll get to what I know a lot of you are wanting, cameras. So if you figure out a way to surgically attach a third leg between your two legs, <laughs> right, and you want to start a business that promotes this service that you can, you know, do for people. You need a website for that third leg service. And you're gonna wanna use domain.com for said service. You, you get to domain.com, they're gonna get you that hosting plan, they're gonna get you the domain name, they'll help you even pick your domain with the domain discovery service. So, I don't know, it'll be like thirdleg.com or my third leg between the other two.com, something like that, I don't know. We'll figure it out. And you can get it up for cheap by using the coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout to get 15% off your domain name and web hosting, it's glorious. So, help people get them a third leg between the other two. I'm gonna be honest. By using domain.com. I'm gonna be honest, that sounds really wrong. What does? You know how much faster you could run? Why is that wrong? Logo. And we're back. First camera that we're gonna talk about is the Red Dragon, the Dragon Sensor, which is a 6K sensor. Yes, you heard me, 6K. They're saying that the sensor will also do about two to four stops more of dynamic range and can you can put it into a Scarlet camera for I think they said about uh, $9,000. Now, I have to say, I'm not drooling over this one. A 5K workflow is tough enough, especially in the land OV effects, but a lot of people are going nuts for it, so there you go. I am a RED fan. I do love me some RED cameras, but I'm a fan of pretty much most cameras. There really isn't much to get me too excited personally here. There you go. Dragon. 6K. However, something I do think is very interesting is what Blackmagic is doing. Last year, they released the Blackmagic camera, which while I like the idea behind it, I found it had too many issues to really pursue it. But now, they seem to be headed in the right direction with two new cameras. The first is basically the upgrade to last year's camera, which is the 4K cinema camera. Now, the reason that this one is so much better than the last is because it has a 35 millimeter sensor and a global shutter, which is what's most exciting to me. Now, if you don't know what a global shutter is, basically it takes every frame as one complete picture. So it exposes the picture as a whole all at one time. Whereas a rolling shutter, which is what you have in your DSLR, takes a picture in a line streaming down the image. It's the difference between this global shutter and this rolling shutter. And that is why you get the skewing when you pan since the camera's image is being drawn down the frame and the object is being caught at different points in time, which with the global shutter, you wouldn't have that issue, which is freaking glorious. The second camera that they released is the Pocket Cinema camera. This is a Super 16 equivalent camera that shoots 1080p in ProRes or Cinema DNG raw at 13 stops of dynamic range for under $1,000. This is something that I think is super exciting for super low budget filmmakers, especially since this thing looks like a small point and shoot camera. You could get into some sick locations, get your shots and get out. And I could think of all sorts of things that I could do with the quality of a camera like this in such a small form factor. So you could get this baby, pop some 16 millimeter glass that you got off eBay and start rolling. It is a very exciting time for super low budget filmmakers for sure. Of, of, hopefully I can get both of these cameras into my hands to do some tests for you guys soon. Logo. But that's it, those are the things that got me most excited this year. But if you get a chance, definitely go out next year. This is like gear heaven. Gear heaven, I just drooled for three days straight. It was everywhere, drool. But until next week, my Twitter, you can follow me there and tweet to me. And I'm off to get the key that was surgically implanted behind my eye, out.